All right, we have Tom here with Hidden Beats, and today we are talking to Australian producer Lude. How are you doing today? G'day, mate. Uh, yeah, can't complain. It's pretty sunny up here. So we've actually, we've actually just had these crazy floods in uh, Australia at the moment. Like literally at one point it got 14 metres high in some spots. So wow. like, Yeah, so it's kind of been crazy, but we're on the Gold Coast. We're, kind of, we're very lucky to uh, not have copped it as much where I live, but... Yeah, besides besides that, like besides that, it's been good. <laughs> Everything's mm, that, been all right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's like people have literally lost like their full, like full towns have fully been totally submerged underwater. Oh wow! So, so yeah, so so many people have lost like their full homes and everything. So it's pretty crazy. But yeah, huh. they're just trying to. Everyone's just trying to get past that at the moment. Down here, down under. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we're still you dealing with mean? like snow and rain right now here. So like I'm based in Canada. So, like, what's the what's the weather where you live? Because I I was talking to someone the other day from Canada, and, and I think it was like minus twenty or something. <laughs> On average, for winter right now, we were hitting about minus twenty, but we were dropping down to minus that's forty crazy. for a couple of weeks. Minus, yeah. and that's degrees. That's degrees. Like, yeah, like Celsius, like you guys. Jeez, like. I think the coldest I've ever felt is probably like minus five, and but I was wearing short shorts. I'm like, this ain't this ain't this ain't the shit. Like, what am I doing? But it's minus it's short. forty. It's short is- weather here for me until about minus 15. So you can like, so you're used to see so you're fully climb, or obviously you climb a time. The yeah. shorts weather to minus 15. See, that's just like insane to me. I mean, like, I'm a big guy too, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair. But like where where I live, it's uh it kind of sits at 20 degrees above 20 degrees, and that is in winter. So that's like the coldest it gets all year. It's kind of in this like perfect little tropical zone. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I know where my wife wants to move now then. (laughs) Yeah, Tensa. Everyone wants to bloody move it. Yeah. But yeah. Well, let's jump into this. We got a little bit of time to spend together. So um, my first question for you is what inspired you to get into uh, music? Oh, yeah. So pretty much, so pretty much way back, uh, you know, like since I was born, I think, I think I got my first drum kit when I was like five years old. My dad was like a freak guitarist and, you know, like he still teaches at the Conservatorium of Music, which is like uh, the music university that you go to. So he's, he, so he's like, so he always wanted me to play the drum so I could play with him. And uh, yeah, you know, I played in like metal bands growing up in high school and all that. And then it wasn't until I was probably about 20 and uh, I just moved from uh, Tasmania, which is the little island down the bottom of Australia, over to Perth, which is Perth is apparently the most isolated city in the world. Mm. So random fact. But yeah, so I moved <laughs> over there and uh, I moved to this house and there was no Wi-Fi at all for like two weeks. So we get waiting to get it installed. And I had this program called FL Studio, which you've probably heard about. And yep. uh, I was on my phone. I watched like an Avicii video on my phone of Avicii uh, showing how he made one of his tracks. And basically, yes, from there, I like I get really hooked on stuff when I get into it. So ever since then, I've just been like obsessed with it. So that's pretty much how I started producing. That's probably seven years ago now. Yeah. Yeah. I was wild. looking at your your SoundCloud actually goes back about seven years. It actually years. goes far back. Yeah, yeah. It actually goes back a while. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, it's funny. Yeah. Yeah. You go. Oh, no, no. Go ahead. Now, nah, well, I was going to say it's funny because like a lot of people now, I just like uh, from this down under song, everyone's like, oh yeah, this is his first song that he's put out. But I'm like, I've actually been grinding away at this for like years and years. And I've done like tours before, like I've been to America and like India and all of Asia and stuff. But now everyone's coming into this new thing as where like now down under is my first song again. It's like I've reset. Yeah. Because because it's done so much better than any other song I've ever put out. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 it hit massive numbers compared to everything, but you also have a loyal fan base too from your SoundCloud days. Yeah, well, that's, that's why it's kind of been like a blessing in disguise because there are all these people who have known that I've been doing it for years and years and now they're like, oh, we've been listening to him for bloody years and mm-hmm. then all these new people are like, oh, this is your first song. But they're like, no, 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 he's been putting shit out for years. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of, uh, it's actually a blessing that that's happened because there are so many, uh, I'd say that these days with TikTok and all that because, you know, just random songs will blow up on TikTok and go crazy. But it'll be it'll actually be the person's first song that they've put out so Mm -hmm. they don't have that you know they haven't done shows before and it's hard to kind of like turn that song into like you know like a actual music brand that they do if you know what i mean yeah yeah because that everyone just knows them they are just the song where it's kind of been lucky for me because i guess people have known me a while before so they're like oh yeah that's ludy does these he does these kind of shows you know you can go see him and stuff 
so yeah it's been a blessing and finally being able to get back into shows finally yeah After we're just two. starting to open here too so it's like it's like everyone now hey it's kind it's kind of because you know the all this crazy stuff on the news at the moment it's like it doesn't even exist anymore like on our news like mm-hmm. no one even talks about it anymore i'm like suddenly it's just gone yeah it's we're crazy already, we're actually announcing some shows like this week i think some tours coming to town and it's gonna oh, be pretty yeah. fun yeah what what kind of uh what kind of shows do you guys mainly do so uh like i partner with a lo- with one of the local companies it's mainly hip-hop um rock there's comedy shows that we put on here too so it's we kind of haven't broken into the countryside yet but mostly the hip-hop rock there's dance occasionally a little bit of mixture of everything a bit of everything a bit of everything yeah. i mean oh, hey I'm, not, eh? I'm trying to convince i'm trying to convince the owner to get into country music too because there's a lot around here with that so yeah hey if you can do it why not hey got to expand mm-hmm. as much as you can yeah for sure so, so how has your sound evolved from seven years ago now? Like, did you, you find yourself, you've grown immensely in certain ways or? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. Well, it's kind of like when I started, uh, when I started producing electronic music, it was kind of like, um, at the time, you know, there was, I didn't, I hadn't really delved into it because I'd been such a metalhead my whole life. Like I was, I was literally probably two years until I started making electronic music. I'm like, it's not real music. I was one of those guys. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm like, I don't want to go to a dance show. I want to see like a metal band. Like I want to mosh. So yeah, when I got into it, I didn't really know all these sub genres. I didn't really know. Like I, I, I'd like heard of drum and bass, you know, like, mm-hmm. so when I was, when I was, you know, you know, you pretty much scour through YouTube and, you know, you get recommended videos on YouTube or all that kind of stuff and, you know, go through SoundCloud. So at the start, the very first thing I was making, trying to make like a EDM, like proper EDM. I never put any of it out though, but that was my first thing. And then I, and then I got into like trap music. I did trap music for, I don't know, three or four years. And that's kind of what got me into touring uh, when I was making the trap stuff. So, you know, like got that, it did really well when, but I got over it. I, I didn't have fun producing it anymore. And your that's aud- kind of when I had. Oh, sorry. Oh, your, audio, your audio cut out for two seconds at the end there. Okay. Oh, can, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. You're good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah sweet. So uh, yeah, basically I was making trap, you know, I just kind of got bored. I just wasn't having fun making it anymore. And like people kind of like, you know, when you change your sound up, people are like, bring back the old sound, bring back the old sound. And it's kind of hard because you just don't have fun making that anymore. Mm-hmm. So you get, you get on this like re- weird crossroads and I kind of just like, because I have another, I actually have another project too, which is Chum, called Chumba. And that's like a, uh, that's a ha- more house music. So that's all house music. So I kind of like had a little hiatus with Lude for, and it was kind of, you know, just before COVID hit. And uh, I was just like, I don't know what I want to make anymore because I just don't have fun making trap music. And basically through that whole, like, you know, year before COVID to a bit into COVID, I was just pretty much listening to drum and bass. So then I'm just like, let's just try to dive in, spend like a year and a half actually making it without anything, putting anything out. So I actually get half decent at it. And, uh, and then, yeah, it was up, up until like maybe six months ago, you know, I hadn't really done any shows or anything, but maybe not even that, maybe like four months ago, it's went so like crazy this last four months, but I was like, what can I do? Because I don't have shows on, what can I do to uh, keep people like entertained and on my social media you know like actually mm-hmm. engage engaging with people so i'm like why don't i just start putting these little 20 second remixes out of songs you would never expect to be a dance song like yeah. down under and like uh hilltop hoods which is like an australian hip-hop act like i did one, a remix of theirs and stuff so yeah i basically started doing these 20 second videos and i, I think the down under one was the second one i put out and uh it just went cr- like viral and i've never had a video do that before so i was like holy shit like this is crazy um just you know like every time you'd, you'd like update your thing it'd be like a hundred more notifications i'm like this is like insane so we're like let's see if we can actually do something with the song and um like if you you know like down under from you know like the old down under from yeah the, yeah. the 80s yeah like it's just such a classic tune so we're like if we could actually ever put this out even as a remix that would be so cool because you know it's blowing up on 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 the internet webs like whatever mm-hmm. So we got in contact with Colin, uh, Colin Hay, who's actually the original singer from Men at Work. Yeah, and we I sent actually, him over the track. I, I read that you guys got uh, vocals and stuff from him, man. Eh? Yeah, yeah, and it's crazy because uh, he he said something along the lines of he's like, I don't see why I would do it, 
but I don't see why I wouldn't either let the kids have fun. Cause mm-hmm. he, you know, like he's an older guy now and I'm like, what a legend. So he basically just gave you, okay. But he's like, you, you're going to have, I've got an, I'm going to send you over some new vocals of it. So I didn't actually use the original vocals. So he sent me new ones over. Then I just mix mastered those. And we literally from him saying, yes, uh, we had the track out in like five days, I think, because oh, we're like, we want to, we want, we want to put it out wide. Like the momentum of this video is going crazy. Mm-hmm. So yeah. And then, you know, put it out, had a slow few first days, whatever, but then it just started like picking up and picking up and started going to all these new territories, which I thought it was, you know, maybe in New Zealand, maybe in Australia, people would listen to it, but then it started going like all over Europe, like even in Canada. Now people are listening to oh, it. Yeah. It's like, I think it's like number, like it got to uh, a couple of weeks ago. It was like number six in Germany. It's like in Estonia, all these like European places. And I'm just sitting at home, like, what is going on? Because every well, morning you it's check close to 60 check, million plays now, or something like that, too. Yeah, I think it's over 60 million. At the last like month, it's basically been on a million plays a day, a day. Which I'm just like, if I ever had a song hit a million plays in like a year, I'd be like, yes, that's sick. Like I've hit a million, and now this song's getting a million a day. It's just, it's really trippy. It's so mind blowing. But um, yeah, all these, and now all this, like, I get to talk to you now because of it. So it's crazy things are happening. <laughs> Yeah, that's I think I've dropped this mic that many times. Oh, okay. Like, yeah. Oh like yeah. <laughs> I've broken up like one of those USB road mics. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I was I was just saying, like so much crazy stuff's happening. Like the, just today now, like uh I'm talking to you, I get to talk to you, and then I got to talk to someone else. Uh and then this afternoon we got to talk to another person, like all in different countries. And it's just all from just making originally a 20 second clip on like Instagram and TikTok. <laughs> so yeah, it's very life-changing and it kind of just still blows my mind. I mean, yeah, it's it's got to be something. All of a sudden, everyone knows knows you, really. So, yeah, and it, and with that, wait, and I will say, with that, does come like a, a fair bit of hate too, because you know, like whenever a song goes like really big, people start like you you get because it's a cover, you get a lot of like uh, people who grew up with the original song, like this is shocking, like how mm-hmm. can we do this to the original? But then you get like younger, you know, the younger generation now are like, yes, this is a banger. So you kind of get like this, and you will get like a, a lot of older people who are like, oh, I love the new version, but yeah, it's, <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest, some of the hate to deal with at the start, I'm like, well, I'm not used to get like these like hate messages and shit, but now yeah. it's like, well, whatever. It comes with it, it comes with it. Like you can't have a song do that and not get a little bit of hate, just a little bit. <laughs> There's little, purists little out there who just, who go crazy for things. So it makes sense. You're right. Yeah, and that's exactly mm-hmm. what it is. You know, like, and especially like old, older DMB heads grew up in the nineties, you know, like going to raves in the nineties. They're like, what's this commercial like crap? Like, <laughs> yeah. so I'm just like, yeah, like I get it. I do get it. Like it did, because it did become commercial. I didn't make, I didn't originally make for it, like plan to do that, but if it is what it is, Hey, I get to talk to you now. This is sick. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Hey, you get to, you get to talk to a lot more people and a lot more people get to listen to your stuff. So yeah, can't go wrong. Do you have plans for, well, I know you were talking about, you have other projects. Do you have any plans for some, some more big tracks that you're looking at or? Yeah. Yeah. So basically this, so pretty much how, what's happening now. So going to do an Australian tour off this song and then uh, we're doing like a full European tour and I've never even been to Europe before. So that's going to be, I'm so excited about that, but uh, we're going to actually, we're going to try to come over to Canada as well, if we can because like that's a, one of the places where the songs, you know, people are listening to the song. Mm-hmm. But um, before then, yeah, we're trying to, it's basically, we're trying to do the same thing again by getting like another big sample clear because it's like, what's that, what's that saying? If it, if it's, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. 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 So we're just trying to, we're going to try to do the same thing again, you know, like obviously a totally different track, totally different vocal, but if we can get a, another like kind of classic vocal cleared that everyone knows and turn it into a drum and bass format, that would be awesome. Like if we could do that. So that's the plan. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that would be fun. And I, I know Canada would love to have you over here. So. Yeah. Well, I've never been like, I've, I've, I know my, uh, my manager, he, he, he did the old, what is it? Wait, is it in Whistler? Is that the, yeah. 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 So he the did ski the, resort it, there. Yeah. Yeah. The, like where you live there for six months or whatever. Mm-hmm. He's just like, man, Canada's the best man. We got to get over there. Talk yeah. You, you would have some fun for sure. Hey, if we can help get you over here, we'll definitely try to do that too. Oh, it'd be wicked, eh? Yeah. I just want to, like, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a little bit of a skier. I've probably done it 10 times in my life, but I, I can't imagine how good it would be over there. Oh, yeah, it's a whole different and experience. It's a party town too, eh? Part, like, it's yep. a full part. Yeah, Canadians love to party, don't they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I hear, like, it's like, because it's always like, it's always like Australians, 
And our uh, people from the UK just hit it so hard. And then I always hear that Canadians do as well. I love it. <laughs> and, and we always like to joke that we have stronger beer than the US. So everything's just a bit better here for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love that. Eh? Yeah. I can't wait. Yeah. So what's a, a loot live show like? Uh, so, well, at the moment, it's, it was kind of like... But just before COVID, we'd spent like all this money on getting this crazy visual kind of lighting show that we were going to do. We got to do one show with it and then we went into <laughs> lockdown. Yeah. And like, you know, we'd spent all this money. So like in lockdown, I was just like just slowly chipping into my savings that whole time. I'm just like, oh, this sucks. But um, yeah, so we'd spent all this money doing this like crazy lighting live show, you know, like a bit of a bit of our instinct visuals and stuff. So it's yeah. like kind of instinct to the music. So now we're just kind of we're trying to rebuild that again for this up and coming tour. But yeah, so it's you know like it's it's as good. It's we're kind of trying to make it as good as you can for an electronic show. Okay, if you know what I mean? Yeah, we actually have uh, like like so I'm based in Ottawa, like right in the capital city here. We actually have uh, an electronic festival that goes on for three days a year out here for that. So but we. We have a very good fan base out here for something like you. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's what I was uh, I was talking to uh, one of my mates, uh, Shock One, the other day. And he's just like, yeah, man, like I'm doing a Europe tour and then I'm going straight over to Canada for a few shows like this year. And I'm just like, oh, man, like I didn't I didn't realize that. Dr- I didn't actually know that drum and bass was actually actually big in Canada. Like it's one it's got one as few territories in Canada have like a massive market for drum and bass, apparently. Mm-hmm. So I, did, I didn't even know this. So I'm just like, oh man, like if I anything to get over to Canada, like it'll be so sick. Oh, for sure, for sure. So yeah. some of the questions I like to ask when I'm doing interviews, and these are kind of like my my three main questions. Is there advice that you were given uh in your career that you held on to when you were coming up? Um <sighs> Let me let me think. That's a hard one, eh? Um, These ones usually stump people. <laughs> it's 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 kind of so when I when I come up because I didn't know anyone at all in a, in the whole electronic music scene at all. It was in the days of like you remember when it was remember when Spotify wasn't really a big thing and it was SoundCloud. SoundCloud was like the king. Yeah. So it was kind of like back then. I um I would just put out stuff on SoundCloud and you know, you would actually get like decent plays on SoundCloud back then. And, you know, people would, all these, if a bigger act like it, they would repost it. And then you get a bunch of views from like their following. So that it's kind of hard now because like when people ask me, like, what are the best ways to start out? I, I started out totally different to what it is like now, because now, you know, everyone just listens to Spotify. And if Mm -hmm. you don't have, if you don't have like a, uh, you know, like a label pushing your song or like a management or something like that, it's, it's really hard to like actually get your stuff played, but I, my best bit of advice now would be start making video and you know, like people, people want to stray away from it, but it's literally changed my career, putting out videos on TikTok and doing reels, literally mm-hmm. those 20, those 20 second videos, that 20 second video of down under has fully changed my life now from a, from a video that I put out on TikTok. And because, and because it's like, if you put out a song on TikTok, right. Someone, it's a 20, you put it out, out as a 20 second clip or whatever. So you put the best bit of the song out. People could then like use that sound and make another video using your sound. Mm-hmm. And then like, so what happened with uh, Down Under is someone made a dance to it and then it become this huge dance trend. And it was like, I think it was like, there were, it was over a couple of sounds, but I think it was like a quarter million people used the sound in like a month oh, wow. period. So, so, and if, and then you go on some of those videos, some of those videos have 10 million views. So it's like how much, you know, you just add it up. It, it probably had over like half a billion views just on TikTok based off people just seeing that 20 second clip scrolling on their news, on their news feed. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, it's like this power of that algorithm. And you know, that from there, obviously all these opportunities can arise from it. So I would say like the, it's, the game is just changes every year. And I would say now the best thing is putting videos out on 20 second videos, out on reels, out on TikTok. That would be my biggest advice, how to get your stuff out there as an, as a new, like someone new to the scene. Mm-hmm. it's just it just works like and you know you never know what's going to take off one video would just randomly go in everyone's algorithm and everyone would just be scrolling would go on their page and then boots this suddenly in one day this video has had half a million views so yeah that is that's what i would give advice to now yeah mm-hmm. it's a I've bit st- different than getting advice but that's yeah you know what i mean no no i mean that, that makes sense and and tiktok is the new thing like that's where everyone should be i'm still trying to find a way to get tiktok into my content somehow but 
like I'm not, I don't do anything fancy. So we'll have this interview. Maybe I'll post a 10 second clip on there and see if a few people will like it, but yeah, it's, yeah, it's because I, I, I'm thinking of, uh, I'm thinking of starting a podcast soon with uh, my cousin who I do my other music project with. And I was, I, we, we were having the same conversation. We're just like, well, how are we going to like post these clips? Do we just post clips or like, how do we like post something that people will actually like click on? I know mm -hmm. what you mean. Yeah. It's a whole different monster to try to get through. <laughs> and I'm of the age where none, none of this stuff existed. Like I'm 37. So I was, I was around before when you still played outside and you bought like a Walkman and things like that. And so <laughs> I'm trying to adapt to some of these new things coming out, but I'm a techie guy, but t TikTok and me just don't mesh right now. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I know what you mean. Like I'm, I'm almost 30 myself mm -hmm. and I like, I, I, I put it off for years and I put it off for like two years. I'm like, nah, nah, it's so lame. It's so cringe TikTok. But then, you know, like if you actually use it, you get into these little niches where it's like actually videos you want to watch. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but soon, hey, within one month of getting into it, it changed my life. So I'm putting out videos on it. So I, it's, hey, everyone can hate it, but you know, it can, it can, for your music, it can do wonders. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm hopefully going to figure that out one of these days. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. It took me, it took me years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so next, one of my next three questions is, something what's something on your playlist that you have right now that people wouldn't expect you would listen to oh this one's easy i would say all of labyrinth's stuff oh have nice. you have you you know the the show euphoria yeah 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 so basically i pretty much listen to that soundtrack on repeat like every single day and okay. once another song that i listen to every and i've listened to it every day for probably five years is uh the less i know the better by time in parlor okay every, yeah every day every day i love that song but yeah, Labyrinth. I would say Labyrinth is pretty much, I've been listening to that more than anyone for the last few months. Yeah, which yeah, is definitely I, not <laughs> banger music. Definitely not club music. <laughs> I, I like to hear that because uh, it's 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 new music for me too in a sense if I'm not, if I don't know some of these things. So it's, yeah, it's, it's fun. It's it's yeah, it's very, uh, it, like, and the funny thing is like, I make, I make dance music, but I don't really, I kind of listen to like really like emotional, sad music. Like that's what I love to listen to. Okay. Like, I, li I literally listen to James Blunt like all the time. Nice. nice. <laughs> like you're beautiful and all that. Like I, I, I don't want to say it, but I actually love that stuff. I grew up, my nan used to play it with me all the time. So I love like acoustic music. Oh, that uh, stuff's amazing. Like I, I'm a lover of, of a good, of a good song or a good track. Like it doesn't matter what it is to, genre wise. Yeah, so, I want to be hit. I want to be hit in the fields. Like I want to, like I want to yeah. be like, like I'll listen to acoustic music and go to the gym. I won't li ever listen to dance music. I'll listen to like weird, like piano music or like acoustic music. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't make sense, but it gets me like in an emotional place. So I'm kind of like, like gotta go hard. I don't know. It's a different <laughs> mindset. Yeah, no, it makes sense. Yeah. It does make sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So this is this is the hardest question I have for for everyone. What is something that you wish more people asked or knew about you? Oh, that is a very hard question. Um, this one gets everyone. So <laughs> yeah, I don't. What? What? What's? What are you usually? What is? What? Give me an example of what someone says, and I'll get. I'll, uh, well, before? one person uh, had mentioned you know, their their love of horses, and you would like it's not, it's not in anything to do with their music, but you know, just they have a love of horses. Another person yeah, was cooking I, things I, like that. I get. Yeah. Well, I guess it would kind of be like my music taste that i actually listen to most of the time mm -hmm. like like as i was just saying like i listen to acoustic music at the gym like i don't i when i'm getting ready to go out or i'm having a big night or whatever i'm playing dance music but the rest of the time besides the time i'm making music i'm, I'm literally listening to like the most chilled out sad piano music or like ballads and stuff even like classical music like that's what i that's what i like to listen to like oh we'll be driving in the car and uh my miss so I'll be, I always put on the classical channel and she's just like, why do you listen to this? I'm like, it's so, <laughs> and like, it's so nice. Like it puts, it makes you like, you feel good. You, know, mm. you feel a bit airy. Yeah. My wife doesn't yeah. understand some of the stuff I listen to either. So <laughs> yeah, I know. Like she's like, why do you listen to this? I'm like, you just don't get it. Like it's beautiful music, but I, you know, like I'm, I'm trying to listen. I'm trying to like, when I listen to the, like classical music, I'm trying to, I, I'm trying to dissect it into like how I would make that in a, an electronic like on FLC, okay yeah you know? so yeah. i'm always trying to like dissect it like that is such a crazy melody i guess I'd yeah yeah that's probably why i, I love to listen to it but yeah okay so it's more it's more <laughs> mechanical for you almost in a sense than that when you're doing I, that. I hate i hate that it is though but i can't help it yeah i wish i could just listen to music and not break down every single element of the song but it's it, once you get into producing i reckon after a few years you just cannot help it 
you just break down every song in your head like oh yeah i wonder how we made that drum sound so nice i wonder how we made that bass real crispy like it's it's constant it does your head in well i i, I would imagine that that would be so like so i i shoot videos and stuff so I'm like, oh i know what he did here i know what he did here and and yeah I, you know you automatically yeah you can't help it you're like oh yeah like editing or anything you, like once you spend a bit of time doing it all you do is dissect and you're like no 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 just listen to the song but it's hard after a few beers though that's when you just start listening to the actual <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah for sure yeah. it's a pet peeve of mine when you're watching something that's green screened and like you you know even though they do such a good job on it you can still pick out those little things and it's like oh that sucked they they could have fixed that or they could have done this and it's like CGI. It's like CGI just doesn't do it for me. Like, uh, you know, the older movies, like the older horror movies when it was actually like properly, mm -hmm. an actual proper costume and stuff. Even though it does look faker in a way, it, it looks scarier because you know it's like a real thing. Mm -hmm. Where like CGI now, just uh, I feel like it just doesn't hit the same. That's yeah, just it's, it really that. doesn't. There's, there's, a, there's something lacking in some of that. Like that old grungy you know blood bag that's spurting everywhere yeah it's, and it's all real and like you know like mm -hmm. even like uh michael jackson thriller like that uh when he turns into the um the what is it the werewolf like it looks oh, yeah. so creepy it just mm -hmm. looks so creepy because it's like real mm -hmm. yeah no uh, yeah that makes sense for sure like I, i'm right with you on that for sure and what's that what's that other movie um uh werewolf in london werewolf in london is that yeah is that yeah. the one yeah, that one's crazy too. Like the wolf, like they did such a good job with like the effects on that. But yeah, it's real. That's the difference. Like it's mm -hmm. actually real. It just hits you harder, <laughs> right in the cell, mate. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, I know you got a busy day, so I don't want to keep you too much. Is there any final thoughts you want to give to new and old fans that might be listening slash watching this? Um, oh yeah, if you're listening, go check out um if you want to check out all the uh remixes that i've done that aren't actually on spotify you can just go on my soundcloud because you know a lot of them um a lot of the things that i've been putting out recently are bootlegs that you can't officially put out so yeah you can go check them on spotify or whatever hopefully i'm coming over to canada hopefully between june to september time let's let's try to make it happen for sure so yeah that's it <laughs> thank you for having me mate yeah for sure and I'll make sure to I'll make sure to link your SoundCloud and everything. That way, people can get a direct shot right there. Yeah, beautiful. Well, you enjoy the rest of your day. I know it's it's a little, it's a little earlier there than than it is here. Like it's almost eight. What's the time? Or... Oh, eight p.m. Yeah, no, nah, yeah. it's ten forty-five. It's no, it's morning here. We got mm -hmm. all day. <laughs> I gotta go yes. watch a movie with the wife. So <laughs> <laughs> that's Bob's night. You go enjoy it. All right, you have a good one. Uh, have a good one, mate. Cheers for this. Hey, bye. See you, bye.